Hi everyone, it's Ray with Tarot Living, and guess who? Chili Bird is joining us today. She's going to uh, be my little guest for this video. So we are going to actually do a review on Pamela Coleman Smith's commemorative set edition, and this was put out by US Games. And Stuart Kaplan, who is our tarot guru, <laughs> who created US Games, actually created the book uh, that we're going to talk about in a minute. So I have to tell you that I have not typically been reading with Rider Waite tarot cards. I read with Rider Waite friendly, but I don't necessarily read with the actual Rider Waite cards. Although I have such incredible respect for Pamela Coleman Smith's um, art and, you know, just feel very connected to tarot artists in the past and feel like that tarot deck, you know, really started a movement of, you know, having the tarot cards speak to people more clearly and to really allow the tarot to come alive. Although all of that is true, I just personally didn't find that the original US Games, you know, Rider Waite set in the little yellow box was very inspiring for me personally. So I hadn't actually been reading with them uh, for a number of years now. So I actually did years ago, and that was the only deck that I had. And when I came back to tarot, I actually immediately switched to something else and found that it was just a little bit more inspirational. So although I have great respect, I wasn't actually reading with the specific US Games edition. However, I have to tell you that I did order the commemorative set thinking, oh, this will be like a great, you know, keeper's edition and, you know, of course I should have it and I want to read about her and, you know, her art and there's various pieces of art in here that I'm going to show you, uh, little postcards and things. Um, but, you know, when I got the cards, I have to tell you that I just fell madly in love with them to the point where that's all I'm re reading with right now. And so everyone knows at the Tarot Society and all my friends, they're like, oh, your deck, you know, <laughs> I know that it's, it's my favorite deck now. And I think I featured it in a video not very long ago. And I'm going to show you why it's my favorite deck and there's so many reasons but essentially it is of course the same images as the Rider Waite you know regular original edition it's just that the colors are a little bit different and they're more muted and they're just so warm and inviting and just so easy to read with so I'm going to talk about that a little bit more but first, I want to actually um, talk a little bit about what comes with the commemorative set. So there's actually, like, a, you know, obviously you can see there's a box set that it comes with. And this box set does open up. So there's two different sides, and the other side is the same. So on one side, it actually has the cards. And on the other side, it has a few books and some pictures of some of her artwork. And so it has a copy of the pictorial key to the tarot, which was written by Arthur Waite, of course. And it has a book about Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork. So the artwork and times of Pamela Coleman Smith, which was written by Stuart Kaplan. And it also comes with a variety of different things. So it's actually a few card spreads. I believe there's a five card spread, the woven spread, and a three card relationship spread. And then it also comes with various pictures of her artwork. So if you're a collector or if you want to take some of these pictures and maybe frame them, this would be a good opportunity to do that. And there's just the most famous picture of her that I think we've all seen. And so there's Pamela Coleman Smith. And here's a piece of her artwork. And it's so interesting, isn't it, to see something that is not part of the tarot deck that she's done because you can just see her, her style comes out so clearly if you see some of her other artwork. So here's another piece that's actually quite different, I think, from the artwork in the tarot deck. And here's one that I think really could be actually like a two of cups almost, couldn't it? Which is really neat. And here's another piece. And here's one that's a variety of different people. And then there's a copy, these are actually postcards. There's a copy of the Empress. 
So if you are a collector and you want to take maybe some of these pieces, like, you know what would be really great and what I might do is I might take some of these, like two or three of these smaller size and actually put it into a frame on the wall, you know, where there's three different, you know, types of photos that you can put in or pictures you can put in. And I actually might, you know, keep them in a little framed area. And it's very inspirational for me. I'm sure many of you know I'm, you know, creating a, a tarot deck right now. And so it's very inspirational for me to feel like I'm a part of, you know, just the history of adding to tarot and where really much of that tarot art started, which was with Pamela Coleman Smith. There was, of course, tarot decks before that, but I think this tarot deck in particular, um, really, it, that tarot deck, I think the way that she depicted it spoke to the masses and it spoke to the average person. And so I just really you know, have so much respect for her artwork and for her um, contribution to the tarot world. So this particular book is great. It actually goes through a lot of her history of her life and her art life, not just her early life, but actually her as an artist and all of the different things that she was involved with and the projects. And then we get to about 1909 and she gets involved, well, she was actually involved with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, you know, even prior to that. And she knew Arthur Waite through the Golden Dawn, um, you know, organization. And then later um, he asked her if she would do the tarot deck. And so that was how that all came to be. And I think just a few of the things that are really interesting, the way that they wrote them. I actually just want to read something out to you. So I like this um, comment that he makes because um, Stuart Kaplan refers to their interest in astrology and the connect connection to astrology. So Stuart Kaplan writes, Waite had found a group of old occult manuscripts relating to the tarot cards and felt after studying them that the deck could be made more meaningful by adding pictorial images to the 40 pip cards, which we do know. Wade instructed Pamela to create images that follow very carefully the astrological significance of each suit as it is influenced by different zodiacal signs. Pamela's own interest in astrology had been evident since at least 1904. So I think that's really neat because it just it shows that the history of how these cards came about is not just related to one specific you know thing. It wasn't someone saying, oh well, I think we should depict you know, the Five of Pentacles or the Two of Cups in this way. They were following, you know, astrological principles when they were doing that. And, of course, we know that um, the Tree of Life was also involved in that, along with a couple of other things. And so, of course, I follow the astrology piece of it more than anything else. So I just thought that paragraph was really, you know, poignant for me. Okay, so we're going to look at some cards. But before I do that, I just want to kind of give you a rundown of, you know, the reasons I think that U.S. Games, you know, put out this commemorative edition. I think there's really two reasons. First, I think that many people in the tarot world feel like Pamela Coleman Smith as a person and as an artist was not highlighted as much as she should have been um, because the deck was called Rider Waite and Rider was the publishing company at the time and Waite, of course, is Arthur Waite who you know, wrote the pictorial key to the tarot and designed the deck. But the artwork itself, you know, she was not highlighted and her life was not highlighted as much as Arthur Waite's. And so I think that's the first reason. Obviously, they're trying to, you know, bring a lot of um, attention to Pamela Coleman Smith. The second reason is that Stuart Kaplan notes that this is really a reproduction of a 1909 you know, um, vintage deck. So I believe it was one of his decks that he probably has in his collection, and it was a reproduction. So the, as I've noted, the coloring is different, the vibe of it is very different, and I'm just so in love with it. So I'm going to actually show you the differences between these. Okay, so I'm going to show you some cards. Hopefully I'm going to do this okay because it's always backwards, so it's always very fun. Um, okay, so this is 1971 edition, and here's the commemorative edition. And you can see Chili Bird right in the middle of that. So you can see how much more muted it is, and there's a lot more grays in this particular deck. So again, 1971 and commemorative edition. So this one is actually more taupe. See how they've brought in a taupe color for the gray? And it's much moodier, if I can use a word for it. Again, 1971, 
and the commemorative edition. So this, you can see, is much darker. Again, the clouds are much moodier. And the colors are a little bit richer. You can for sure see that on the moon. So 1971 and the commemorative edition. Much darker, much moodier. For the yellows, I want to show you. This is 1971, Seven of Swords, and here's the commemorative edition. So the yellow in this one is not as dark as um, some of them. Some of them, they made the yellow quite a bit darker. This one is just slightly muted. And I'm going to show you one in a minute that's less muted than that. So here's another one, Eight of Cups in the 1971, and then the Eight of Cups in the commemorative edition. So you can see the difference there. Okay, so here's a few more. So this is the Three of Swords. So you can see a little darker, a little more moody. The Hermit is quite a bit different. It's um, almost a steel gray in the commemorative edition, which I love. And the Empress. It's kind of got a shine there, unfortunately, but the Empress is a little calmer. All of the colors are a little bit richer. Her dress even, a little bit richer. Okay, one more, because I think you get the idea. So there is the Four of Wands, and then the Commemorative Edition, which is not highly different on that one. So some of the yellows, they've really muted down. Like in the Empress, I find it's quite a bit different for the yellow. So you remember this one was the Empress. So I find the yellows a little bit more different in that one than say the Four of Wands, for example. So some of them are definitely closer than others. I mean, that's you know more dramatic. So I just wanted to show you a few. I think you get the idea. The lighter blues are most definitely down to kind of a a steel blue or a gray blue, um, a more muted blue. Things like this that you see in the original, these sort of brighter blues, uh, you just don't see it in this deck, which is great for me because I enjoy colors that are more muted. Um, I do like bright colors, but I, the, that, some of these colors, for example, like let's say the star card is a great example. They're actually very, um, Kind of the term I use for this is kind of bubblegum colors, like where it's the blue is very light and almost like a baby blue. Um, the picture, the coloring of her, of her body is very kind of a fake peachy color. Whereas in this particular deck, I find that the actual coloring of, of things like skin is more toned down. So it has a more realistic kind of feel to it. So I think that's maybe why I like it. Okay, so just a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. So the back of the deck is um, fantastic. So the back is actually her signature, so on each of the corners. And um, the center is actually a five-petal Rosicrucian, which can be seen actually in the death card that she created. So you see that? So there's a, um, a symbolism that they tied into what they put on the back of the card. Also, I wanted to mention the cardstock on this particular deck. So for me, cardstock is probably up there as being one of the most important things. And the reason is that it doesn't matter how amazing the images are, if the cardstock is terrible and I use the cards for, you know, a couple of days or a week or two, and I can see that they're immediately warping, I'm I just, it's not a card deck that I'm actually going to stick with. So for me, cardstock is really crucial, and this particular deck has amazing cardstock. It, I don't know the exact weight, it's probably, I want to say 350, I think there's like 300, 350. I think it's probably a thicker cardstock, and it's excellent in terms of holding up. I've been using it continuously for the last uh, several months, and it's shown absolutely nowhere at all. And in terms of the size of these cards, it's the same size as the original Rider weight, and so it's probably, I'm going to say it's about 4.75 um, by 2.75. So very standard tarot deck size. 
so that's some um, kind of the things I wanted to say in terms of how it presents. Um, the other thing is that uh, the, the it actually comes with a little bag, and I'm I, you know it's not a fancy bag, and I know some people say oh they just threw it out, but I'm actually using the bag as well. So I've kept the cards in the bag that it came with, and I don't know why because I have bags that are much more you know fancy than that but um, I've just really enjoyed the fact that it's blue and the backs of the cards are such a beautiful muted blue and everything is very calming so for me I have just really enjoyed the backs of the cards the size of the cards the card stock and the finish I want to talk to you about the finish as well so the finish you know how US games went into that phase where they were laminating or like should I say like over laminating so many different decks and it is not over laminated at all it's pretty much what I would call a matte finish or a semi gloss finish so it is really it is not overly laminated you get a little bit of a shine but if this were highly laminated we would have such a shine that I could actually see my reflection in it and I cannot so it's great it's just really a matted sort of finish so those are the things I wanted to tell you about the actual cards and how they present um, yeah overall I just love this deck I think that if you want to take a look at some of her artwork and read the history about this amazing woman who you know really changed the terrible world then absolutely it's a total buy in my opinion I believe that I got it from um, Amazon, or you can get it from your you know, local spiritual store, I'm sure. I think it was around, I want to say, like it's a little bit more expensive because of all the things it comes with. It's maybe 35 I want to say. I, I don't know exactly. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you. That is the review for today. I hope everyone is doing great with their tarot reading and their tarot development. And thank you so much for your support for Tarot Living, and I'll post more videos soon. And if you're really energetic, give my video a thumbs up or a like. Take care.